Welcome back to the Kingdom Prescription Lifestyle, and I am your host, Ruby McMillian. Right now, I want to take you into the things that the Holy Spirit says he wants to be added to every believer. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Peter, the first chapter, and we're going to look at verses 3 through 9. I love this. Let me read the entire text to you first, and then we'll come in and unpack it a little bit. It says uh, in verse three, he says his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world by evil desires. Wow. Okay. I got to come back with uh, verse number uh, four that it says through these, he says he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. Verse five says for this very reason, Make every effort to add to your faith, add goodness, and to goodness add knowledge, and to knowledge add self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to, fer and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Verse 8 says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from all his past sins. Oh, my goodness. So Matthew 633 and the latter part of it says, and all these things shall be added unto you once you have gotten in and once you have pressed in and once you have brought the things to God yourself. Especially, I, I, I want to say this to you. I want you to make a habit of when you come before the Lord, as he said in 1 John 1, 9, said that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. You need to know one key that will hold you in bondage from receiving your healing is unforgiveness and being deceived by the enemy with lies. Come clean. He wants you to be clean. He's already cleansed you. So there is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But he wants you to say it out of your mouth. And I know I'm telling the truth and I'm teaching real good right here, because when you go to God and when you lay it all out and when you tell the truth, he is there waiting. He's there waiting. And then that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. And then that's when the angels that he's given charge over you take control. And then that's when things start happening. And that's when you start getting breakthroughs in your life. That's when you start seeing the manifestation of some of the things that God has been holding up because he recognized that you were still being deceived by your own lies. My God, Jesus. Woo. All right. I want to talk to you a little bit about, I don't want to get too ahead of myself because I want you to understand these are the things that he wants us to be added to us once we have, in fact, sought his kingdom. He, he wants us to get these virtues in our lives. He wants us to understand that his divine power, it's only through the word, through his power. It's by his spirit, okay? Uh, it's by his spirit that things are going to happen because there's power in the word of God. Okay, he has given us what? Everything pertaining to life and godliness. What kind of life does the Lord want us to have on this earth? A life that's full, a life that's rich, a life that's disease free, a life that is worry free. Oh, I know that's saying a lot. Worry free? Mm-hmm. See, one thing I've learned is that when you trust God and when you trust his word and when you trust him to be faithful and just and for him not to ever forsake you, not ever leave you, 
You can lay down and go to sleep at night. You don't have to worry about the matter. All you have to do is raise your hand, surrender, said, Father God, I believe you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for how you're going to bring it to pass. And you need to go to sleep. Because your body is going to need the rest, okay? Because when the answer does come, you're going to need your energy to get up and go do what he's doing. Just as I'm doing what he told me to do. All right? He said, pertaining to life and godliness. Oh, that life is the Zoe lifestyle. That is total fullness. All right? And godliness. Godliness means that uh, you want to learn now how to walk in the ways that Jesus did. Our teacher you know, Jesus gave us the law of new life. He gave us new life. So you have to learn how to walk in these virtues. And it says through these things, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate. Here it is in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. I got to come here with some of this. OK, the precious promises that we may participate in it is we're going to have his peace. First of all, I want you to know that you're going to have his peace. So when you have the peace of God that surpasses our own understanding, we will recognize one thing for sure. I am not in control. You can give it up. It's all right to trust him. It's all right to faint in the arms of Jesus. It's really okay because he can carry every burden that we ever thought that we were going to have because he knew. That's why he provided the blood wash redemption for us. Look, I want you to understand that when we acknowledge, when we yearn, when we thirst, and when we hunger for righteousness, we will then put on the new man. We will then start walking and living in these virtues. And what are they? For this very reason, make every effort to add to our faith. Because our salvation is by faith, is it not? That we believe the Lord Jesus to be the only son of our Father God. So we are now going to add to our faith goodness. Mm, just be sweet. Be nice. Okay? And all of these, these seven things, I, I love this. These seven things, uh, the Holy Ghost is saying, just ask me for them. The Holy Spirit is saying, ask me for goodness. Ask me for more knowledge of me. Ask me for self-control. Ask me for perseverance. Ask me for godliness. Ask me for brotherly kindness. He said, and then the seventh one, I love this. This wasn't in my study notes. He said that then I'll wrap you in love. The seventh virtue is love. Because how many of us know that love hides a multitude of faults? Love can find a way. Love will help you get through some things because love is not an accuser of the brothering. Only the enemy is. And love will then show you the various ways to help your family change things in your life and to go on and have the lifestyle that he's called you for. But before we go to that, I, 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 I want to come back a little bit. And talk about the goodness. We talked about being sweet. You have got to get the knowledge of the word of God in your life. You have got to have it. Not someone else. When you go to the Basilia, which is the house of God, the house of prayer, when you've heard the man, the woman of God, and you write it down, make sure that you go home and that you have some time that you are spending in the word, that you're praying, that you're fasting, and that you're asking the Holy Spirit for his revelation to you. Because the word of God says the scripture is of no private interpretation. So therefore, when, the, when you read a scripture and you have a need about goodness, about knowledge, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Then we want to talk about self-control. This is the big boy. I'm probably going to end on this note today. Self-control, temperance. Do you know we as believers have to exhibit self-control? Uh-huh. Yeah. And... Since we're talking about the kingdom prescription lifestyle, and of course mine deals with more importantly, how to overcome those appetites, those evil desires, those things. Yes, I had to come through this too. Okay, but I decreed and declared that diseases, especially this type 2 diabetes and especially this hypertension and these strokes and all of this poor circulation, I decreed and declared that I was not having it. So 
It took self-control. Did it take me some time to no longer eat up a, 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 a whole uh, dozen of Krispy Kreme donuts? Did it take me to come back and not want to eat up pistachio ice cream? Did, it have, did I have to bring in those things? You know what the Holy Spirit brought to me? He said, he asked me a question. Do you not know that your body belongs to me? That it's my temple that I paid for? It? How dare you wreck it? He said, because that is the vessel that I've placed my treasures in for you to be able to walk around on this earth and get the job done that I've assigned to your hand. Oh, and when he said that, he let me know that when I honor my body, I don't let everything in it or on it. He made my appetite to be just like I had to honor the institution of marriage. You said you can't have self-control. Yes, you can. Over every evil desire, over every gluttony spirit, you would have self-control when you married the man that you loved. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. That means that you don't have to step outside and have somebody else to be fulfilled. Okay? I know this. So I want to leave with you today. I want you to think about this virtue of self-control. You can do it. It's yours. It's power through the word. It's power through prayer to decree and declare it that you will not allow anything to come in and wreck your health that you will not be able to stand and you will not be able to work and you will not be able to be productive because the word of God says that if you have these things in you increasing measures, then you will not be ineffective and then you will not be unproductive. If you want to be productive, you're going to have to exhibit self-control. I love you today. And listen, if this broadcast has been a blessing to you, I really want you to call in to our telephone number that you see on the screen. And I want you to email me on what you see on the screen and let us know how these teachings are blessing you. And above all, please call us, email us and send in your prayer requests that we may be able to come together and touch and agree. And God will be able to do the work in you and through you and for the betterment of your household and your temple. And remember that you are somebody, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we love you, and we will see you at the same time, same place next week. God bless you.